in this video, I will talk about a proof for computing probability of the first stage outcome of a two-stage experiment. So we're interested in a formula for the first stage outcome, AI, given the outcome BJ of the second stage in a two-stage experiment. And I will show that the conditional probability of the first stage outcome AI given the second stage outcome BJ is equal to this formula here. So in the numerator, we have probability of AI times the conditional probability of BJ given AI. And in the denominator, we have a summation over all the first stage outcomes. So let's go on to the proof. So consider a two-stage experiment where in the first stage, the possible outcomes are outcomes A1, A2, AK. So we have K possible outcomes in the first stage. And for the second stage, we have n possible outcomes, so outcomes b1, b2, 2, bn, so n possible outcomes in the second stage. And from the definition of conditional probability, we have that the conditional probability of a first stage outcome ai, given the second stage outcome bj, so ai is first stage outcome, and bj is second stage outcome. So the conditional probability of ai given bj is equal to the outcome of ai and bj. So this can be seen as a possible outcome of the whole experiment, where in first stage we have outcome ai, and in second stage we have outcome bj. So that's in the numerator, and in the denominator, we just have the probability of the second stage outcome BJ. So as I said, the numerator is a probability of a specific path, AI then BJ, and the denominator is just the probability of BJ, which can be computed by summing the probabilities of all the mutually exclusive ways in which the second stage outcome BJ can happen. So I'll show that now how we can write BJ, probability of BJ. So by multiplication rule, we have that the probability of a specific path, so probability of AI and then BJ, equals to the probability of AI times probability of BJ given AI. So this is a conditional probability. So in the first stage, we have some probability for outcome AI happening. And then we have a conditional probability, so given that outcome AI happened in the first stage, what's the probability of outcome BJ happening in the second stage? And for the denominator, event BJ can be decomposed into a union of mutually exclusive events. So BJ is a union of all possible outcomes in the first stage and BJ in the second stage. Because we could have A1 and BJ since the experiment consists of two stages, right? So how could BJ happen? Well, we could have A1, then BJ, or A2 in the first stage, then BJ in the second stage, all up to AK in the first stage, and then BJ in the second stage. So because all of these events, they're mutually exclusive, and uh, BJ is a union of these events, then probability of BJ can be represented as a summation of probabilities of the intersections. So. So for mutually exclusive events, we can just sum up the probabilities. And by multiplication rule, we have that probability of AR intersect BJ equals probability of AR times the conditional probability of BJ given AR. So that's how we get this expression here. So what I'm saying is that we have some point before the experiment, we don't know what will happen, but we know the possible outcomes in the first stage are A1, or A2, or A3, or AK. And for each of those outcomes, we have a probability. 
And then we also don't know what will happen in the second stage. So we can have A1, B1, or A1 and B2, or A1 and BJ, or we could have A2 and BJ, or AK and BJ. So, we could have all these paths that lead to BJ, and these events are mutually exclusive. So that's why we can sum up the probability and represent probability of BJ as this summation here. So therefore, we just showed that the conditional probability of AI given BJ is probability of AI times conditional probability of BJ given AI in the numerator. And in the denominator, we have a summation based on the multiplication rule. So we're summing over all the first stage uh, outcomes. And now uh, we'll talk about an example. So suppose 5% of a uh, population has a certain disease and we have a test for this disease which will be correct 98 times out of 100 when the individual does have a disease. So if you test sick individuals um, 98 times, the test will correctly say that the individual has a disease and two times out of 100, it will say that the individual does not have a disease when they actually do. But if the individual does not have the disease, the test um, fails one out of 10 times and it will give a false positive result. So one out of 10 times, the test will say this individual does have the disease when they actually don't. So that's a false positive result. Uh, suppose that an individual took the test and tested positive, but we don't know if they actually have the disease or not. We just know the test uh, gave a positive response. So we're interested in what is the probability that the individual actually has the disease. Uh, it's a pretty important question, right? We have a positive result, but what are the chances the individual is actually sick with that disease? So we're interested in the conditional probability of disease given a positive test result. And based on conditional probability rule, that equals to the probability of having the disease and having a positive test result, that's in the numerator, uh, divided by the probability of positive test result. And based on what we derived, we can use the multiplication rule. So in the denominator, we can represent the probability of the intersection as this. And we can represent the probability of a positive result as a summation. So a probability of positive is the probability of a disease times probability of a positive result given disease, uh, plus probability of no disease times probability of positive test result given no disease. So as you can see in the denominator, we're summing over the probabilities for the outcomes for disease. So there's possible outcome disease and no disease. And we're interested in conditional probability of uh, having a positive test result. So now we just have to input our numbers into the formula. So probability of disease given positive result equals to this formula here. So from the question, I said that 5% of people have a disease. So probability of disease is 0 0.05. For a person who does have a disease, 98 times out of 100, the test gives a positive result. The probability of positive result given disease is 0 0.98. Then 100% minus 5%, it's 95%. So probability of no disease is 0 0.95 because 95% of people don't have disease. And when a person does not have the disease, probability of a positive test result, as we said, was 1 out of 10, so 0 0.1. And now we can just use these numbers to sub into our formula to compute the conditional probability of disease given positive test result. So inputting the numbers into calculation, we get that the conditional probability of disease given positive test result is equal to this uh, formula here, and we end up with um, 0.34 once we calculate that. So actually, even though the individual did test positive for the disease, the probability that he actually has the disease is 0.34. So the probability of him actually having the disease is relatively low given the positive test result.